Alright guys, welcome to your last CSS tutorial, for now at least. And in this tutorial, I want to explain to you guys a few things. If you go ahead and take a look at the default website, you see that there's a little area to the left with all the links, and then you have your big main area. Go ahead and search for something, you're going to have your links to your left, and then you have your big main area. 220 780 however if you go on the login page or the register page you see that things are laid out a little bit differently I laid this out pretty pretty much I split it in half 500 pixels on the left 500 pixels on the right so therefore just on the register page since the main area the main focus is really on the form and not the side links I wanted to go ahead and lay this out a little bit differently and why am I telling you this? Because we need to code one last CSS file that's specific to this register page. Now, the good thing is this is only going to take a few minutes. I just need to overwrite a, a few features. So let's go ahead and make a new file. And I want to go ahead and save this as CSS register.css. Whenever I make a CSS file that I'm only going to use on one page, I like to name it the exact same thing as that page. That way I can easily identify what CSS file is specific to that page, rather than forms, which is of course for all the forms across all the pages, or main, which is to my main website. So again, this is register.css. Go ahead and save that. Now, as you can see in my PHP file, I have two main sections here. One is the left side, and one is the right side. So let's go ahead and work with those sections right now. So the left side, pretty much the only thing I need to do is I need to say, okay, this is going to be on the left and it's going to be 500 pixels. So what I want to do is I want to give this a width of 490, and you'll see why in just a sec. 490, and I want to add, hello, no one can type today, margin top of 10 pixels and this was of course just to give us that little bit of padding from the top so it's not pressed directly up against the search bar and I want to give a margin right of 10 pixels as well now the reason I do this is because first you have to code it correctly this left hand side is pretty much going to be where this picture is now if I didn't give it any margin at all say we decided to change this picture right here so it had a solid background we don't want it directly butted up against this or else it'll look kinda weird so you want to give it a little bit of padding so of course with the margin right of 10 in the width of 490 that gives us our 500 and the last thing we need to do is float it to the left just so it's butted up against the left now after this remember our entire website was a thousand pixels wide we already use 500 pixels right here so for our form we have 500 pixels to work with so let's go ahead and code this baby right now right side now for this right side a margin top of 10 pixels of course just go ahead and copy that shiz right there it also is going to float left even though it's on the right hand side we want it butted up against the left and for the width if you guys can guess it's 500 pixels now the reason we can just use 500 pixels is it's already spaced apart from this left side because this left side has a margin right of 10 pixels so it can just go ahead and take up the rest of that it doesn't need a margin right because there's nothing to the right of that now the last thing that we need to do is let me go ahead and open up forms.css even though we aren't going to be uh, coding it again as you can see the container was basically the amount of padding I mean excuse me the width of the form plus the padding so right now we had 780 to work with so 740 plus 20 on both sides gave us that 780 however this form is a little bit smaller we only have 500 to work with so let's go ahead and overwrite some of these features container is going to have a width of 460 pixels now I think I ought to explain a few things before I continue on first of all you're saying okay how can you have two things named exactly the same thing well not only in uh, HTML or CSS but in computer programming in general it reads your program from top to bottom so the bottom most thing is the last thing 
the most recent thing it reads. So basically it's going to take all the settings from this, then it's going to take all the settings from this, and then it's going to take all the settings from register CSS. If you overwrote anything in register CSS that was inside forms.css, it's going to use the settings from register.css. So basically if we say okay, First, we want to set our container to 740 pixels, but then later on we change our mind and want to change it to 460 pixels, it's going to take the latest most instruction and go with that. Now remember, our total width of the form is 500 pixels, but we didn't overwrite the padding of 20 pixels. So when we have our new width of 460, we still have our padding of 20 on each side, which is 480. 500 and that's going to give us our new and improved form perfectly fit for our register page. I know that was a lot to take in but trust me it makes sense it's so easy to work with forms when you have some general guidelines then you can just overwrite whatever the heck you want to overwrite. Now two other things that we need to look at real quick is the input section and also the hints. Now the input section is how wide we want those input areas to be. Pretty much the area that the uh, user types into. By default they were 500. That's no good. That means they're going to be the total width of the form. So let's go ahead and change that right now. The new input width is going to be 360 pixels which is going to look beautiful. And the last thing is this field hover hint if I could find it right here. Now remember the hint was basically the little box that popped up and gave you a hint of pretty much what data you're allowed to enter. By default it was shifted 650 pixels whenever we were working with that big form. However we're working with a pretty much shrunken down version of the form right now so we need to change the positioning of that hint. So let me just go ahead and copy this. Field hover hint we're pretty much saying we want to overwrite the hint right now so instead of a margin of 650 pixels which would put it way outside the form we want to change this to 450 pixels now all that's going to do is it's going to move the hint it's pretty much going to make it fit in our mini form so now let's go ahead and save that and check it out our register.css page is perfect Basically, remember, all we did is we overwrote some settings. We pretty much changed our layout different from the default, and we changed some settings in our form because the original form was for a big form, and these are the settings that we need for a smaller form. Pretty much a smaller width, and smaller input boxes, and the hint has to be closer to the input boxes. So there you go, we are finally done working with CSS, at least for now, at least until we go to another page. And the good thing is whenever we do code other pages, the majority of the CSS is taken care of. So anyways, I'm gonna shut up, I'll give you guys a break. So thank you guys for watching, and finally in the next tutorial, we get to start with the good stuff.